it's always the creative team that makes it special. And not that only the individuals of that creative team are so special, but the way they work together. The Nutcracker is essential, and you'll find this at just about any ballet, professional ballet company in America. For Atlanta Ballet, the Nutcracker is about three quarters of the number of tickets that we would sell in any given year. It is about 25 to 30% of the income that this organization generates in any given year. In other words, a successful Nutcracker funds a lot of the work that isn't financially successful, but is really important to serving our mission and our purpose in education, in artistry, and in advancing this art form. Putting the production of Nutcracker together is very complicated uh, and intricate work, as there are many different elements and many uh, different dancers and uh, performers involved. Uh, even though Nutcracker is done around the world, um, every production is different, every production has uh, different elements that need to be relearned and, and rethought. So I believe, yeah, the, the biggest challenge for us is, is to slow down a little bit and, and, and make them feel welcome and not feel that they're not, they're not present. Typically you want to start uh, planning for the Nutcracker in June, uh, once we close our May show uh, and kind of get the season wrapped up, it's time to kick it right back in. Uh, so June, you want to start um, reassessing and opening up those notes from last year and what's what could be different, what could we do different. Uh, you know, every year is a learning process. We start the audition in early September, usually the, uh, the week after Labor Day. Uh, we have probably about 300 children audition, um, from six-year-olds all the way up to 16. And uh, we just bring them in. We usually do it by heights because the costumes are very, um, they're not very adjustable and by their technique, uh, we try to accept as many as possible. Then we go into the organization day, which is where we try on their costumes and set up their cast and that's usually another six hour day. And then starting in October, we rehearse every week and we rehearse all the cast by role. We rehearse the week of Thanksgiving, except for Thanksgiving day. And then we go into the theater and we have two weeks of technical rehearsals. And then we start with um, the show runs. And that's when we bring it all together with the crew on stage so that everybody knows where they go, what to expect, and we don't have much time, and it, it's uh, in the theater. So it's, it's a big challenge. Everybody has to know exactly what they do so that within the next two, three days, we bring the orchestra together, we bring the choir, we bring skaters, gymnasts, everyone becomes one big piece of the production, of the performance. It is almost a year-round process. We go ahead and during the summer, we will pull things out that we've made notes about during the run that need to be repaired. Um, and so we'll start doing those repairs or we'll make alterations. Because things have been changing as the choreography, as everybody settles in and we find out what the costumes need to do, we make some alterations so that they're more functional for the dancers. Keeping the design aesthetic, of course, This version of the Nutcracker definitely presents a lot of technical challenges due to space size. One of the biggest technical cha challenges is the fact that we have three automation systems uh, operating all basically at the same time. Uh, you have one automation system that makes the house move. You have another automation system that makes the house go up and down. Then you have a third automation system that opens and closes the book. Um, so in between all of that, uh, you know, you can imagine technically it's pretty challenging. Because there are so many huge set pieces, 
Um, it can be very difficult navigating around it in the space. Like when you're in a big studio, you don't have those huge set pieces that you have to navigate around. So when you get on stage, um, you kind of have to revamp how you move around and how big you dance in some sections and how you might have to hold back a little bit in some sections. It was a new experience for Yuri to work with Tom Pai as a scenic designer. Um, he was experienced working with David Finn, light designer, but also Finn Ross came in as a videographer for this uh, production. I think the combination of these individuals was very important to, and just observing them in, in, in one space, working and tossing the ball to each other, that creative ball, and, and developing new ideas and supporting each other, or like just seeing how many angles the, the whole process took was really thrilling. And of course, Sandra Woodall's costume costumes uh, took the production to another level. It, they're, they're just so expressive and delicate and um, just beautiful. I believe it's, uh, it's intricacy. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. Not only the dancer have to be aware of, but uh, uh, production team and uh, stage hands. Uh, it makes the story and the magic of it uh, come to life. Also, uh, Mr. Uh, Posikov's choreography is very well thought out and methodical that it demands a lot of physicality from the dancers. I think the most challenging part is getting the coordination <laughs> and the movements just because Yuri's style is very different from any choreographers I've ever I've ever worked with, in a sense that he's he wants us to be free, but also in very strong and classical way. So getting those two combined is a little bit tough, <laughs> tougher than usual. So the transformation scenes for the crew is choreography, you know, because they are moving it to the music on certain counts of the music and it has to be timed correctly. And we actually have music rehearsal with the crew to time everything out perfectly. So when the dancers do come, everyone is on the same page musically of what needs to happen when and how much time they have to execute it. The scenic elements in the Nutcracker are um, large. They're uh, pretty imposing, you know, impressive, if you will, in the size and just the fact that from the transition you go into larger than life, uh, you know, shrinking everything else. There's also an element of safety. I mean, we have like a three-story bookcase and like an about 20-foot book on, the, on stage. So it's, it's, it makes everybody very aware of the stage and what's happening on stage, what's happening off stage, because uh, the audience is what goes on on stage, right? But there's a lot of moving parts uh, off stage that, that can, uh, we have to also be aware of. There are about 250 costumes, and that is a complete costume, not the pieces that go into a costume. So it's it's a bit. We send over our wardrobe supervisor, who is Abby Parker, and she is there for the entire runs. And she supervises a union crew that we have. Um, and I want to say we're seven to nine people. Um, part of that is dependent on just the quick changes we have, how many kids we have, how spread out we are in the theater. But they're there every performance, every show. We have a dedicated laundry person, um, so hopefully anything touching the skin can be washed in between performances to try and keep things as clean as possible. At the end of the evening, everything gets sprayed down with wardrobe spray so that to help um, remove some of the scent and to help kill germs and things like that. One of the gifts of the Nutcracker is be, there are thousands of young people who study ballet at, at Atlanta Ballet and at studios across the, across the region. And the opportunities for those young children to audition and potentially be dancing alongside the professional dancers of the Atlanta Ballet 
created a kind of family tradition that grew up over generations and families. Georgia.